to In Him with Pastor Dan Wormuth of Joplin Family Worship Center, located on East 7th Street in Joplin, where they are passionate about sharing the freedom and forgiveness found in Jesus Christ. Now, here's Pastor Dan with this week's edition of In Him. Pastor Dan's sermon continues from last week's broadcast. Abraham didn't go ask other people for permission or do you think this is a good idea from the Lord? Abraham didn't ask his servants, is this right? Now, I understand, I understand the biblical principles of those who have spiritual insight and oversight for you, you know, pastors who speak in your life to run stuff by them. But I'm talking about a lot of people, God is, God is asking them to trust him fully in something. And they want to just run to a bunch of friends and say, do you think I should really do that? And I'm going to tell you, there's a lot of folk who don't want to trust the Lord fully. Why would they encourage you to do so if they don't want to? You have to be so careful about, you, you need to vet the person speaking the word of the Lord into your life. I got a call today from a man who we don't, we, I, I've never, I don't think I've ever talked to him by phone. If I ever have, it's been one time in my entire life that we, there was a joint conversation. It was a conference call with him and other leaders, I think. That, I mean, that's the only time I know him, but he called. Why? He needed to hear from God. And he he needed to know that what he was sensing was the Lord because his mind and his heart were not connecting concerning the issue. And the last thing he thought he was going to hear me say was what I said to him. But what I said to him was the word of the Lord and he knew it was the Lord confirming. I understand there are times where you need someone to just speak the word of the Lord into your life. But you have to vet the people that you let speak into your life. And, and I'm going to tell you right now, Abraham did not go seeking out a second opinion. He heard from God. And this is the man who's leading the household. He is the pastor of the flock that's hanging out with him. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's why this shepherd wants to hear from the Lord. And I'm so grateful that God gave us this principle that out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. That's not fleecing God. That's trusting God. And he's, he, he will honor his word in that area. Area. But I know folk who fleece God 20,000 times before they act on what God said to do. I'm going to tell you, that's a long, drawn-out mess. Can I have a witness? We don't, I don't want to hesitate. I, I want to I find Jehovah Jireh, my provision. So we're not going to depend on someone else's shirt-tail relationship to maybe somehow try to help us out. We're going to walk as mature sons and daughters of God and hear from the Lord. That's why what I'm preaching and teaching and anyone else that comes into our pulpit and in our classrooms are teaching and preaching, it should be confirmational to what God is saying in your life. You and I all need to have our face in the book. I'm talking about the word of God, my Bible right here. We all need to have our face here. We all need to know why do some people fall into deception? They don't know for themselves. And that's why Sunday, listen, I can't tell you how many people are getting a couple spoonfuls of nourishment on a Sunday and they're the literally dying Monday through Friday and Saturday, trying to make it in their, in their walk in this world. You know, all of us need to feed ourselves the word of God. And this pastor wants to hear what God is saying to the church so that it can confirm what you're reading in the book. That's a call to a higher level of maturity. I'm not a cattleman. We, we don't, we're not running cattle. That's Johnny Hankins' job. I'm not running, I'm not running cattle. I'm a shepherd. I, I, I'm a leader. I want to speak. If you hear the voice of Jesus in my voice, then you know you're following the good shepherd, the chief shepherd. I'm an under shepherd. He's the chief shepherd. I want you to hear confirmationally. In other words, I'm really not looking for kindergartners. Although I've had one in my home this whole last year, I'm looking for people who are choosing to walk as sons and daughters of the Most High God. And I want you to know that God wants to be Jehovah Jireh for you and on your behalf in your life. And there are people in this room right now who could tag me if I went and and touched their hand and tell you how many times Jehovah Jireh showed up because they were obedient to get to the place of provision. 
So he just indicated the direction in which he should go and Abraham went that way. And then God, while Abraham was being obedient, God showed him the place afar off. Hebrews 13, 17 says, obey them, they have rule over you. Spiritually, submit yourself for they watch out for your souls. There's just something to be said for our willingness to be uh, committed to hearing what God has to say to us through those who have rule over us. If no one has rule over you, you're unruly. Now, I'm not talking to you because I know y'all are here tonight submitting yourself. But if the Holy Ghost just pinched you on the backside, maybe there's just an error of your heart he's trying to get to. Are you hearing me? Everybody needs to have somebody that is speaking into their life. I submit to voices that speak into my life. And no, they're not spooky voices from way out here. Uh, I, have, I have those fivefold ministry gifts who speak into my life. And they, they, I can share anything I'm thinking about. And they can ask me questions about it from scriptural point. Or they'll go to the parts of my heart that they, they're hearing that. But they want to know um, what is the revelation of that. I mean, they can ask any question. I, we all need that. Why? Because the enemy, he's, he's a dirty dog. And he would try to suck the very best of people. Are you hearing me? I know, I know some preachers who start out really good. And then they go off really far. And they lead a whole bunch of people there. To South America. And they all drink the Kool-Aid. In my own experiences as a father... I can tell you that I don't follow my children around. I lead my children. My children are not ruling my household. I lead the household. They're called to follow. I remember when early in, early in ministry wondering, is, is being in ministry going to be hard on my sons? We got our promise early on, Pastor Cindy and I did, that God had called our children to ministry just like he would called us to ministry and that they're to run right along with us. Now, I don't know about you, but I, I know PKs who have resented. I don't have time for any of that tonight. I just got to tell you that um, what a privilege to run with my father and our mother in ministry and just serve them. I mean, you, you understand, Joe was not even as tall as being knee-high to a grasshopper. He was smaller than that. Uh, and, and for a lot of years of his life. And he was playing drums for mom and dad at, at the church in St. Joe, Michigan. Joe played drums. Uh, Mike was playing bass. I was playing guitar. I mean, playing the piano. And Brother Hornbarger was playing the guitar. And we just learned how to worship the Lord. And mom was leading worship. You know, it was a family uh, investment. And there were others who had giftings too. But I'm just saying, from an early age, us boys just were actively involved. And then Matthew learned how to play the cymbals. And so um, we learned tremendously the power of being involved in ministry in mom and dad's church. Why? Because we were all called. Here's the thought, though. I also experienced the benefits. Are you hearing me? Life wasn't perfect, but I got to tell you, people, people were good to mom and dad. They loved mom and dad, and they, and they loved on us boys. I have, I, have, I have so many wonderful stories of the love of the people of God. And if there is someone who wasn't lovely, I can't remember them literally because there was so much love heaped upon us. Just walking out the faith and the call of God on mom and dad's life and continuing to run the race. I had to have my own definitive call from the Lord and I did. And my boys have reaped a huge blessing. Hey, my sons, they love Jesus and they love ministry because the congregation of the Lord have chosen to love Jesus and love the ministry. My sons are blessed because you bless them. And they labor with us in ministry today. They're committed to the call of God. They're committed to the purpose of God being done in your life. My youngest biological took our youngest son to preacher's kids vacay, PK vacay, so that he would have an encounter with Jesus because we knew that if he didn't go with Joseph to have an encounter with Jesus that camp was going to have an encounter with Joseph and we believed that there was just something uniquely God about 
Zachariah having a ministry hand in that process. Can I get an amen from the amen corner? And it's a good thing. It's just good. Look at your neighbor and say, sometimes God's got to be extra good for somebody. And he's been good. I, I, I am blessed. I've been a blessed preacher's kid. I'm a blessed preacher of preacher's kids. And so I've seen how God wants us to lead. Abraham is leading. God is a loving father. Has bad things happened to you? Well, that wasn't God. God is good. I mean, I, I don't know how many decades I've been hearing God is good all the time, all the time. God is good. But I'm telling you, after you live it a while, you realize God really is good. And he's your provision. He is your provider. How will he provide? I'm going to tell you, he provides in the moment. So when God asks you to do something, you'll have to do it. It's, it's easier to do it with joy, knowing God is got a nature and a character that he'll be true to you and i think about sometimes abraham offering his son on this altar and we're thinking how in the world could abraham even agree to do that i'm gonna tell you why <laughs> it's, it's it's really easy the same god who made a promise to give abraham a son isn't going to break the promise what do you mean i mean even if the knife goes in the air and comes down. God has to keep his promise. Abraham so believed God and his promise that he was not ever in doubt that God would perform whatever was necessary for him to still have a son who would become the father of many nations. When you have settled the issue about the nature and character of your heavenly father, then nothing he asks you to do will shake you into thinking that somehow he wants to be mean to you and tempt when the word was test. The Lord tested Abraham, but he wasn't tempting him to sin. So confidently he says, we're going to go and worship and we're coming back again. And that's exactly what he meant. He believed that his son would live no matter what happened on top of that rocky hill. I can imagine. I can imagine. Even if the flames had consumed his body, that Abraham would say, Isaac, get up! And out of the ashes would come the manifestation of Isaac's life and he would live again. Oh, he, he, he didn't know that kind of power of God. Well, if you have read the scripture, then you would find out that Abraham and God, Elohim, had an encounter. They both, God said to Abraham, I want you to bring a sacrifice and lay it on this, this rock, this place here. And when you cut them in half, I want you to cut them in half and lay them here. Yours and mine for me. And then God passed through the middle of those sacrificed um, animals that were laying there. And what God was saying is this, because this is what happened in a covenant. When you made a covenant, you cut the animal in half, there's blood there, and then both parties had to walk through the blood. And the covenant was, if I break the covenant, then then to me, may I be cut asunder and I be laid out on the rock like these animals are. May I be destroyed if I don't keep the covenant. And God himself walked through a man's formation of men did that kind of covenanting with one another. And God said, I'm going to show you how committed I am to the promise to you, Abraham. And he walked through the covenant animal sacrifices so you cannot forget that the God that Abraham served was a God that Abraham knew would keep his promises now I don't understand this Abraham did not have salvation like you and I had but one thing we see in scripture God accounted unto him righteousness because of his faith Abraham had an ability to have faith in God it was accounted to him for righteousness sake so Abraham's going to this mountain to sacrifice knowing God made a promise, and if God doesn't keep it, God has to be divided in half. 
So too Abraham has to if he doesn't keep up his part of the bargain. So Abraham is bound by covenant to go in obedience to the place. Sometimes you and I, what we do and we're reading and we're thinking about what God wants to do in our lives, we, we just kind of segregate components. We compartmentalize things that God has done and we don't bring to bear all of God's goodness in the moment that doesn't feel so comfortable. But Jehovah Jireh was wanting to reveal himself. So here's the burnt offering. God had made a promise to him. He promised him he'd have a son. And in fact, the promise was a promise of long descendants to him. As many stars as there are in the heavens and sands that there were in the sea. So what an amazing exhibition of faith on the part of Abraham. He holds the knife in one hand and the flames in the other. This, why did Isaac not run away? Because he had already seen the image of the father heavenly father in the eyes of his earthly father I see the wood I see the fire father but where's the sacrifice God himself will provide while Abraham's tying the hands of the boy in his feet the Bible says that Abraham laid the wood in order I want you to know this man's not going like, oh, I can't do this. I don't want to do this. You mean, oh God, and just throw the wood any which way on the, on the altar that he built. No, the Bible says that Abraham laid it. Abraham is walking to a T, the requirements that Jehovah has given him to do puts the wood in order. This is not a man shaking with, I don't know what I'm going to do. This is a man who is setting everything in place. And then he scoops up his son. Isaac does not, I don't, I don't know much you, but I, this is what I've come to understand and, and knowing how God is good. I see in the face of Abraham, Isaac looking and seeing confidence that God has got this. Isaac is laid on the altar and Abraham in obedience raises the knife. He's ready. He has the fire in one hand, he has the knife in the other, and he looks up. This is on you. Because I've done my part. <laughs> and about the time he is ready to let go that knife, the angel of the Lord cries out and says, Do your son no harm! I do want to point out that this should be a double entry here in your heart. God does not want human sacrifices. But he wanted to know if Abraham would believe the nature of God. And it was proven in the heart of Abram. There's a provision for you. Abraham turned and looked. And true to the very prophetic word, Abraham has said, God himself will provide. God provided a ram in the thicket. If he'd have been on another hill just any hill because he was frustrated at God the ram may not have been there and true I don't think the ram would have been but he went to the place the Lord pointed out in the place of God's direction is his provision I'm telling you tonight I believe God wants to provide for you you have obeyed God you have said yes to him do not let circumstances be the proof of God's love for you. Let God's love for you be the proof of God's love for you. For God so loved the world, he gave. He gave. For Abraham, a ram in the thicket. For you and I, the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. So in that moment, Abraham stretched forth his hand, and now we hear the angel of the Lord speaking and, and the God just says, I, now I can see. I, have, I, I now know, or uh, I know that thou fearest God, the, the word of the angel of the Lord said, and seeing that you have not withheld your own son, Genesis 22, verses 10 through 12. So God's messenger brings the stay of execution. Bear with me for a second. The spot where Abraham lifted the knife is called the Dome of the Rock. It's the Mosque of Omar. In the most recent of days, jihadists and terrorists have been attacking Israelis 
on the Temple Mount. And Israel took control over it again. They have had control, but their presence has been very withdrawn. They would not have Israeli soldiers walking on uh, that area where the Dome of the Rock is and where, um, where you can look out the Eastern Gate. But now they're there. And the reason is because you and I are getting closer and closer to a time when Jews shall once again worship there under an old covenant during a time that God has said, I'm going to once more have a harvest of my own children. You know, when we talk about the time of Jacob's trouble, it is really a time of God's harvest. He's been harvesting whosoever will. But there's a time coming here shortly where he will once again pursue the seed of Abraham for salvation. They will think it's the favor of Jehovah for them to build the temple and have sacrifices and worship. But the Antichrist is going to certainly blow um, blow a mess of trouble into that when he brings a pig and lays it on that altar to sacrifice. And we, it's called the abomination of desolations. There is that kind of behavior. The spirit of Antichrist is in the earth. But God revealed himself to Abraham in his day as Jehovah Yura, the Lord provides. I'm going to ask you tonight just to consider these four thoughts, God's provision for your life. I want you to see it here. Just let me move my notes a minute. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8 through 10, write that down. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8 through 10. I see four things I just want to point out to you as you and I look at Jehovah Jireh right now or, or Yura right here in the New Testament. I want you to see this with me. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you that you always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work as it is written. He hath dispersed abroad. He hath given to the poor. His righteousness remaineth forever. And now he that ministers seed to the sower, both ministers bread for his food, multiplies his seed sown and increases the fruits of his righteousness. I've, I have quoted that out know how many times. Four things I want you to notice. It's an outline for tonight. One, God will minister seed to the sower. If it's the lint in the bottom of a pocket, sometimes God is just asking you to trust him. If all you got is some lint, put it in an envelope and write your name on it and put your prayer requests on that because my counters will put their hands on that lint and they will declare that what comes next is increase for your life. If all you have is a loose button in your pocket, if all you have is a penny, if all you have is a piece of gum, if all you, it's, it's, do you believe the word of God or not? The offering is not about how big or how many zeros are after it. The offering is about, do you believe that God wants to make provision for you? I'm going to tell you, he does. I watched a woman who had nothing living on, on assistance and, and her, 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 the child she was raising was the product of a rape. But she chose to believe the word of the Lord. She wanted to give an emissions offering. So in the state of Michigan, she walked along the roads, her and her son, and picked up cans and bottles and took them to the store and cashed them in and didn't buy food with it, but brought it as an offering. How could you receive that money? I didn't. It went to missions. But what she did is she sowed to her breakthrough. God gave her the opportunity to go to school she went through medical training. She got a full-time job. She raised her son in the house of the Lord. She got a house. She got a car. God blessed her. God blessed her. God blessed her. God blessed her. Because she chose to believe that Jehovah Jireh was her provision. And she used whatever seed she had to sow it and believe God for him to provide the miraculous. And to this day, she has a job that blesses her and provides for her and more than meets her needs. 
and the son has married and found a beautiful bride and living their life and they're very happy. I'm just telling you that what could have been just the poor, poor me, poor me, poor me. God, why'd you let that happen to me? No, she rose up out of addictions. She broke the power of addictions. She broke them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. She chose to believe the word of God. And when she didn't have anything to give, she went and found something that she would be able to give and start the laws of reciprocity, of reaping and sowing in her life. And I'm telling you today, it's testimony after testimony like that. God will minister seed to a sower. If you determine in your heart, you want to be a sower, God will put seed in your hand. Number two, God will minister bread for your food. If you will say, God, I'm going to be a giver and not a kicker. I'm going to go out with joy. I'm not coming here and be a divider. I'm not going to be divisionary. I'm going to be a supporter. I'm going to be a partner. If you will say, Lord, if you'll give me seed, I will sow it. If you do that, God will give you seed. He gives seed to the sower and bread for your food, meaning he will meet your needs. And beyond your needs, he will give you supply. Number three is this one as we're getting close to the end. God will multiply the seed sown. Not God doesn't just receive your seed, but when you've sown that seed, he multiplies the seed that you've, re- you've sown. Why? Because God is the God of increase. The Bible says if you sow a win, you reap a whirlwind. That means you tell a little gossip and a great big one comes your way about your own life. Why did they talk about me? Why did they say that? I'll tell you why. Your little gossip, your little wind got a whirlwind. Your little hot breath about something got you a a big old tornado of trouble come your way. Thank you for listening to In Him with Pastor Dan Wormuth of Joplin Family Worship Center. Listen to this broadcast again at KNEO.org. You can also download a podcast version of today's message by searching KNEO on iTunes. Joplin Family Worship Center is located on East 7th Street in Joplin and has ministries for all ages. They invite you to join them this week for Sunday morning worship at 10 a.m. and Wednesday evening service at 7 p.m. Find out more at jfwc.org or facebook.com slash Joplin Family Worship Center. Follow Pastor Dan on Twitter at Daniel H. Wormuth. Thank you for listening. And remember, in Him, you are free.